desire. Attracting the person you want and the relationship you want. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and uplifting life partner. Today I wanted to share with you this topic because I actually was listening to a video of a guy who is a relationship, quote unquote, expert. And it just amazes me that a lot of the people that are out here talking on relationships, as I've said before, majority of the top speakers are single. So they're basically like interview experts because what they're doing is getting their information from other people's relationships. And that's not saying that's bad because they're just passing on information, but they're not talking from experience. And then some of these people have no business whatsoever because I'm not, they're just giving messed up information because they've been hurt. Um, and they're giving bad information to others that's going to keep them messed up in relationships. But anyway, just be careful who you're taking your advice from. Um, but this particular gentleman who was, actually does, I think, a podcast and, and has a YouTube channel. And a young lady called in was asking questions because I guess she makes six-figure income. And she's basically saying that she thinks she kind of wants to be with a guy who's earning six-figure income because the guys were making less didn't really they didn't really connect or whatever and so this guy's goals on and plus she's like i think like 35 she says she was and she had a child not that any of that should matter but those are things that she brought up so this guy was asking her on a scale of one to ten what did she think she was as far as her physical appearance and she said that she considered herself about a five and if she puts on her makeup and everything she's about a seven so he goes on to tell her, you're average looking at best. Now, this is, quote unquote, an expert relationship. That in itself would have been enough to say, why am I listening to him? The conversation should have been over. She should have never followed him again. That should have been the end of it. But she proceeded to go on and torture herself some more. And, um, and it amazes me when people do that because just because a person claims to be an expert or the world has given them a title or they've given their self a title. Um, that's why you don't hear me running around talking about I'm an expert. Folks, I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm going to share with you my experiences, um, things that I have read, things that maybe I have gotten from other people through kind of an interview process. But majority of things that I'm going to share from you are from actual personal experience, being with the same person for 32 years, going through the racial stuff, going through the um, couldn't have kids, going through fighting with her with cancer, losing her to cancer. We had some obstacles. So again, it's not a person that that's just talking. So, but anyway, this gentleman goes on and, and basically tells her that guys that are earning six figure income aren't looking you know for women that have a kid that's that's 35 that's average uh what he's basically saying and you guys have heard me say that too there are a lot of gentlemen and this is not all so that's why i said you can't listen to a person who talks like that because he makes it sound like a blanket statement that guys that earn this income aren't looking for certain people um but there is a truth in the sense that a lot of guys who have a lot of money are just looking for eye candy, which means a woman that they do feel is beautiful uh, from the exterior because money they're not looking for. So now they're just looking for more trophies. So as a lady, hopefully you wouldn't fall into that trap to want to be with a guy who only sees you as a trophy in terms of your outward appearance, because eventually that outward appearances changes and then he's going to dump you for someone else. In most instances, not all, because all is a bad word, but in most instances, because he's with you for the wrong reason. Just like when people chase money, when the money disappears or there's a money issue, the person's going to disappear. Why? Because they're with you for the wrong reason. That's why I always tell people, look for integrity and character because you want to look for the stuff that's there. This is them and we can get the external together. So I know I've driven that home many times. But anyway, this gentleman just goes on and he's just basically talking bad to her. And then he came up and you could tell he just got frustrated because she was, quote unquote, not understanding what he's trying to say, that she's just average. And she's like, you're, you're being mean or something. And he said, man, I'm so tired of you broads. 
And I happened to have looked down. I was looking down for something I was while the video was on. And as soon as I heard the word broad, my head popped up. I said, did he actually say broad? I'm like, whoa. That in itself, you should have called him what he was, which is an a-hole jerk. You didn't have to say that. Don't get me wrong. You don't have to attack people because, you know, like I said before, don't let other people change who you are. But that should have definitely been the thought process. And um, it should have been any, nothing else he could have said at that point. And for me, anybody that listens to his podcast, the moment he said broad should have been the reason you stopped following him. And and again, you, I'm not here to tell you what to do, what not to do. Do your own thing. But I'm just saying his comment calling women broads lets you know he has no respect for women period he 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 wow when i heard that i just was like and he's a relationship expert he's calling women broads he has no respect for women so why would you allow someone who has no respect for women to be a person you look to for relationship advice they don't know. They don't even honor the people they're talking about getting a relationship with. So you hopefully wouldn't want to be in a relationship like that with someone who is letting you know they don't honor you. That's one of the keys. Like we talk about desire and, and how you feel about yourself and all that. You better make sure you love yourself. And if, if you got somebody to dishonor, disrespect you, don't get in a relationship with them. But anyway, but that's why for me, and I only brought this up because I just saw that. And, and it was fresh in my mind, but that's where I'm saying the desire. Why would you desire the opinion or care about the opinion of someone who has no honor, no respect in you? And I'm just using that gentleman as an example. But anytime that you're out here looking, if a person, as we talk about the red flags, or as we've heard Maya Angela say, when people tell you who they are, believe them. When a person lets you know that they don't honor you as a woman, a guy that who going to call you average. He ain't the guy you're looking for. See, he made a general statement again about men who got great income aren't looking for a woman that's 35 with a child that's 13. He's speaking for himself and he is speaking for some guys because there are a lot of guys that would fall into that category. But to make a broad statement is not accurate. And he's not a guy that you're looking for and not a guy that you want to take advice for. You have to, as I keep saying, learn to love you some you. Put yourself in the positions of knowing where it is you're going in your life. And if you place yourself in the right arenas, you will find a guy that you may even look at yourself as average. And which you need to work on your self-esteem because average according to who? You guys have heard me say many times, get out of the comparing business. That's why people have relationship issues because you're comparing your partner to other people and other relationships instead of saying, this is our relationship and let's make our relationship work and we're not concerned with the outside world. So when someone says you're average or you're saying it yourself, compare to who and to what? Don't let the world get you caught in what they're classifying as beauty because everyone gets to determine for themselves what beauty actually is so even in her case considering herself average as a five and then thinking makeup makes her a seven to me that's a very low self-esteem because to me i'm not a makeup person to begin with so those of you that wear it i'm not attacking you good for you enjoy yourself i want to see you natural that's me i guess because all the women around me that i was raised up with don't wear makeup so i'm used to seeing natural i love natural i want to see you being you to me makeup makes you someone else and you're not you. And again, don't don't attack me, ladies. I'm not trying to each his own. I want you to love the person you see in the mirror with all the makeup, everything off. As that one song said, naked, naked, just you, just as you are. If he can't look at you and love you the way you are and say you're a five over here and a seven because you put on makeup, he's the wrong guy. My opinion. You got to be beautiful to me regardless and that's why i like to see you natural but anyway um so we talked about the desire on, on attracting the person you want on the outside now inside the relationship the reason people will have challenges inside the relationship and here we are getting more into the intimacy 
and some of the sexual stuff that goes on when, when relationships stop working from that perspective. And the easiest way to explain this is using, as you guys have heard me talk about before, Tony Robbins' six human needs. Uh, and there's six of them. You have certainty, uncertainty, uh, significance, love and connection. And then you have, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what is, uh, man, five and six disappeared on me. But five is growth and then uh, six is contribution. But anyway, I, I lost it there for a second. But anyway, we won't talk about five and six, which is growth and contribution, because those two happen to do with when you take care of the first four in your relationship, then you want to, obviously you're growing, which is five. And then you're going to want to share that growth with others, what you see who are struggling in their relationship, which is six. So when we're talking about bringing in the desire and the connection, we're only dealing with the top four. See, five and six, that comes later after we got our stuff together. OK, but anyway, those four, the certainty and uncertainty that is so important in relationships, because in the earlier stages, there was a lot of uncertainty in the relationship. And that's when the guy came and brought you flowers or he went and took you to a nice restaurant or she did, you know, she cooked you a nice dinner or you cooked her a nice dinner, whatever the case may be. But, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The uncertainty in the relationship, you were excited every day to talk to each other because you didn't know what was happening. Some certainty has to take place in a relationship. If you guys have decided that you're going to commit to each other, I need to know that you're actually committed to me. That's some certainty in that relationship. But when the relationship becomes so certain where every day I know what we're doing, I know, I just know everything is for certain. There's no uncertainty. Again, certainty in some areas, good. Uncertainty, very important in any relationship. Uncertainty is variety. The moment the relationship becomes so certain that you know everything, it becomes what they call boring. You guys get to understand that if I know what I'm getting, what I'm going to do when I wake up in the morning, I know what I'm going to do for lunch. I know where I'm going for dinner. I know what we're going to do. We're going to sit here and we'll watch a movie. We're going to do whatever. Everything we know for certain what's going to happen. That becomes boring and you have to break that up. And that's why, unfortunately, some people end up looking outside because they're looking for more of that uncertainty that, that you guys had early in the relationship. And that's why you have to have date night and you have to be able to think of at times, how can I surprise my partner or do something? But we got to keep that certain, that uncertainty in, the, in those areas. We want some uncertainty, like variety and things that we do in our relationship. And for some of you, it might be different sexual stuff, more power to you, but whatever it is, but you got to keep that uncertainty in your relationship and not become too certain. And you guys know where your person needs to be certain. You need to quit bad mouthing your partner. You need the negativity you gotta take out. All those kind of things is because the mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. It doesn't try to distinguish that. And since the mind is not trying to distinguish what's real or not, if you keep putting negativities out there, or even if you keep watching the news, which is, you know, a lot of that stuff is depressing. And you keep seeing your partner and you're seeing negative, even if you guys aren't necessarily talking to each other negatively, which you need to cut out if you're doing. But if you see it and you see your partner, you start to link up negativity, your partner. Neg you guys, we don't even realize a lot of times subconsciously we're creating this because we're linking our partner to negativity that they don't even deserve. But all of a sudden we see them and we got a negative thought about them and they haven't even done anything, but we've linked up the negative things going on to the world in the world when we were in a negative state of being, because remember impact is the key to, to, to what changes people's uh, habits where you can change a habit immediately. Remember they talk, you know, we talked about, you can change a habit in about 21 days, whatever it is, you do something consecutively for 21 days, it becomes a new habit, but you can create a new habit quickly by impact. So if you got a negative impact, that's why there's certain songs you hear that you can immediately remember where you are. Or there's incidents that we've heard in the world as far as maybe accidents that are that happened in the world, like the 9-11. Or for those of you, you know, we talk about the, what happened with Kobe uh, on the airplane, on the helicopter and things like that. A lot of people, because of the impact of what happened, they can immediately link up what they were doing when that occurred. And they're linked and now it's a sad emotion attached to that incident. 
And if you happen to be there, then there's sadness that's linked to you also when that when that occurs. So be careful what you link up. We have to take be responsible for what we're linking up and recognize those things. But anyway, if you're a partner, if you realize that when they when things are popping up and you instantly have these negative emotions, you got to visit that and see why those things appear and then address those. And addressing those means I need to have a conversation with my partner if they are the reason. It's not because I've linked up something because I have to address that. But if it's something that they've done or something that I didn't like the way it was done, then we need to have a communication. We need to have a conversation. Speaking of linking things together, hopefully that bell go off, goes going off links this video to your memory whenever you want to have a, uh, a conversation about... Um, bringing desire and attraction into your relationship. So stand on that topic with the certainty, uncertainty. Uh, it's the same thing where if every night you come home, you put on certain clothes, certain outfits, because you're trying to get comfortable, so it's understandable. But there's nothing about that that is sexy. And normally when you're doing it, you weren't trying to be sexy, you're trying to be comfortable. But think about it, if you do that same thing every day, you're creating that certainty then it's a relaxing certainty, which is good, but there's no variety, there's no uncertainty in that. So therefore, you're not going to create that vibe in you, nor are you gonna create that vibe in, in, in your partner, and, and ultimately, your relationship starts to seem boring. That's why every now and then, you may have to come in with a certain outfit, just put it on change the outfit and come in or in some people's case just come out with nothing on <laughs> there's some uncertainty and shock your partner throw your partner off real quick and but different things you guys know what i'm talking about it's like if if your relationship becomes so certain all the time you're doing the same things it becomes boring and the relationship is going to have challenges and you don't have to look outside to bring that uncertainty you just have to recognize you have created certainty in your relationship and then strive to bring that uncertainty into it. It's what you did when you first got together. That's why you guys were so attracted to each other. But again, what you focus on becomes your reality. And if your focus is only on the certain, that becomes your reality. There is no uncertainty and, and the relationship starts to dry up. So make sure you put more focus back on the uncertainty um, there was something I heard, and, and I've shared that before, where it said in the early stages when people started dating, they looked at the 90, their focus was on the 90% of things that they agreed with, and they ignored the 10%. And relationships break down when they focus on the 10% and forget the 90%. Same, this is the same example of that because the 90% in the beginning was the uncertainty. So, of course, that was exciting times. And the 10%, the normal stuff, the everyday stuff, we didn't even pay attention to it. But ultimately, we start to recognize that's all we do. Now, this 10%, the certainty is all we get. And we got to recognize the other 90 and go back to that and create the uncertainty. So, hopefully, I, I know you guys got where I'm saying there. But that's the certainty, uncertainty, which was two of the four. And the other two is, is significance and love and connection. And here is you got to know, again, what's important to your partner. Is it significance? Is it love and connection? And for people that want to be certain that they feel significant, back to what I mentioned earlier about the negative conversation and the little jabs that you do, those start to accumulate because in most cases you don't apologize for those jabs but trust me those jabs your partner remembers well and those things start to accumulate to eventually your partner starts to resent you they don't even know why you definitely don't know why and you're not even prepared for it and all of a sudden you get that partner that says i'm done i'm finished i've had it and catches you totally off guard and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? And it's because all this time they weren't feeling either significant, if that's important to them, or they weren't feeling the love and connection, if that's important to them. Because remember, we talked about the six human needs. Those last two, again, we talked about growth and contribution, which will happen as we get 
taking care of these first four because most people spend their life in the first four and they never get to the growth and the contribution. See, the growth is when we get, we, we get good at what we're doing and then we want to contribute to the world what we've learned and help them out. And most people never get to that. So they live in the first four. But in those four, you need to know what's important to your partner. Is it certainty? Is it uh, the uncertainty, the variety? Is it significant? Is it love and connection? You got to figure out which one it is and you got to make sure you spend a lot of time in that arena because that is important to them. Again, find out what your partner wants and needs are and give it to them. They will turn around and do the same thing to you and your relationship will work. So anyway, but you're only going to create that, as you guys heard it said, I mean, people say about women, women don't want to have, um, they won't have uh, sex or make love in the bedroom if you don't make love outside the room. Folks, that holds true for men too. That's why you guys always hear me say it, it's the same. Uh, I don't get into the male, female kind. It's the same. Trust me. Now, there are some guys that are very immature, that don't really care, and they'll they'll go to bed with anyone and anybody, anytime, anywhere. That's just where they are. But if someone's in a relationship with you, and it is a committed relationship, and they're not happy with you, male or female, they're not attracted to going to the bedroom, male or female. Um, and so... Again, you have to recognize because of your partner, even as the male, as we make it sound like men are animals and can't control themselves as a guy. If I'm upset with you right now, I don't want to go in the room with you. Why? Because the only guys that would want to go in are the guys that are very self-absorbed. And I say that and I know that may offend some guys that hear that, but it holds true for women, too. But. If you can go in there and, and you got problems with your partner, but you're just thinking, but I can go take care of me. That's a self-absorbed individual because it's only about you. You have to be willing to say, we need to get the challenge resolved first. When we get that taken care of and the relationship is working, that's called making love because now you're with someone you want to be with, you're in love with, and you're having sex connected all that together that's making love it's not where some people do every time they have sex they say i'm making love no you're not you're having sex they are different sex is sex love is accepting people as just as they are a uh, person place or thing and then the intimacy is when we can bring all that together we can call that making love but anyway so hopefully just go out again figure out on those four make sure those are happening in your relationship that you do have certainty where it's needed. But make sure you put a lot of focus on the uncertainty, which is what you had in the beginning, which is what the, the excitement in the relationship. Make sure that stays there. And in the right areas. <laughs> Everything don't need to be uncertain. I don't need to know that be uncertain that you ain't committed to the relationship. And you guys understand that. And then also significance. Make sure your partner feels significant. And that means quit tearing them down. Quit taking the little jabs. And then love and connection. Find out what makes your partner feel loved and make sure you give that to them. So again, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who we talk on self-love uh, Monday, I look forward to talking to you on Monday. For those of you on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next week, next Thursday. Uh, but whatever you guys are doing, go out here and understand that the desire to your partner, even if you feel like you've lost it, you can bring it back.